Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw. Today, I am still trying to get rid of all the apples that I brought home from the other day when I went to go visit an apple farm. This is all the stuff we got. Look at that. You can check out that video if you want. And so we're making a classic today and it's gonna be a rustic yet professional apple pie. I feel like it's a classic because everyone's at least eaten it or made it. But I used to work at a pie wholesale bakery. So I think I know a thing or two about pie. And I'm just gonna show you how I make it and maybe show you some tips and tricks. So the first thing we're gonna need to make is of course our pie dough. And my recipe is super basic, but super versatile. I'm starting with some flour, sugar, and salt, and we're just gonna throw this into a food processor to blitz it up and mix. And then we're gonna add in some cold butter. If you've never made pie dough before, then the one thing you need to know is that the butter needs to be super cold. And this is because when it blends in with the flour, it remains in stiff chunks and then gives us little pockets of butter, which create the flakiness and the layers of pie dough. So we're just gonna blitz this until the butter chunks are about pea-sized, and then we're gonna add in our cold water, and this is just gonna help bring everything together. Now we can turn it over onto our work surface Give it a little bit of a knead so that it all comes together into one smooth dough but make sure you don't over knead it because that risks getting rid of the layers and the flakiness but once you're done we're just going to wrap it in some plastic wrap and you can see that there are a few pockets of butter here and there and that's when you know you've done it right so we're going to let that chill in the fridge for a minimum of four hours or you could do it the night before and then wake up and have it ready to go the reason for this is so that the gluten can fully relax. This way you're preventing a tough crust and getting a really tender flaky dough. So while this is chilling, I actually can get started on my ice cream. And apple pie without ice cream is a sad life. So we are gonna make sure that this apple pie gets some good ice cream to go with it. So the night before I actually made my ice cream base, which is just cream, milk, sugar, egg yolks, and then I added vanilla bean paste and some rum for that nice vanilla rum flavor. All the ingredients and the amounts will be in the blog post below as always. So if you wanna remake and check it out, it'll be there. So I made my ice cream base, I strained it, chilled it, and this morning it was ready to be churned. So while I'm waiting for my pie dough to relax, I'm just churning up some ice cream and then <laughs> churning up and we're going to put this into a chilled liter container and just pop it back into the freezer so that it can fully freeze up. So right when I'm about to hit the four hour mark, I can start making my apples. And so I'm just grabbing some large Cortland apples. Cortlands are great for baking and I have an abundance of Cortland apples right now. And I'm just gonna take about eight apples, peel them, cut them in half, scoop out the seeds, and then slice them into wedges and then toss them in a bowl and sprinkle it with some lemon juice. And the lemon juice is gonna prevent it from browning as you work on the rest of the apples. And then once you've got all of your apples ready to go. We can add in some brown sugar, some cinnamon. I grated some fresh nutmeg over this. And then I also added flour so that when the apple bakes, the whole, all the juices will get thickened and become a nice thick pie filling. I remember when I used to work at the wholesale pie place, me and my coworker would make these apples way in advance. And because the apple slices were frozen, the sugar would just freeze to it and they would look like chicken nuggets and then I would always want chicken nuggets. So the whole time I was making this pie, I was thinking about chicken nuggets. So now it's been four to five hours, we can take our pie dough out of the fridge and we're gonna work on one section at a time, which is why I divided my dough into four pieces. My dough recipe makes about two double-crusted pies, but if you only wanna make one, cut it in half, no biggie. 
So I'm gonna roll out the dough so that it's nice, even and flat. Make sure your work surface is nice and floured so your dough isn't sticking to your rolling pin or your table. And always turn your dough so that it's not stuck to the table. And while you're turning, it's a good time to check if the dough is evenly rolled out all around. And then as soon as it's big enough to cover our pie plates, in this case, I'm using a nine inch pie plate. We're gonna put it over, gently push it into the edges. And for now, we're gonna fill it with the apples and then leave it, put it back in the fridge. The, I'm making two pies, so if you're only making one, you can skip this, but I'm putting it back in the fridge to just rest a little, let the dough relax, and then I can get started on the second shell, put it back in the fridge, let it relax. Then I'm gonna take out the tops. I'm gonna roll them out into a large rectangle, and this way it's easy to make a lattice or a full top. So I'm showing you how to do both. The lattice is super easy. We're just gonna take a roll cutter that has a little scalloped edge and we're just going to cut strips and then we're gonna leave those strips on the side and then I'm gonna put it onto our cake. I mean cake, what? And then we're gonna put it onto our pie, the first pie, the one that was chilling first. <laughs> Egg wash is super important. This helps your lattice get stuck to the edge of your pie. We're going to lay all our strips vertical and then work on the horizontal strips one at a time just by lifting those strips, the alternating horizontal strips to lay down the vertical strips and get a lettuce. Once you have the lattice down, we're just gonna take some scissors and then we're going to cut away all the excess dough that's on the edge and just overhanging, just so we can get rid of that, but save it because you can make pommiers or cookies out of those. Feel free to check out that video as well. Finally, we're just gonna crimp the edges using our pointer finger thumb and our other pointer finger. And we're just going to basically make a little crimp all around the edge and this will just seal the top and the bottom together. So then we can brush the top with some egg wash and then just pop it back into the fridge. You're gonna do a lot of chilling here. Forgot to mention, a good tip to know when to put your dough back into the fridge is if it starts to shrink, because when it starts to shrink, that's a good indicator that your gluten's being overworked. So, you know, if he starts to shrink, put him back in the fridge to let him chill. That way you can get a nice and tender crust rather than a stiff and tough crust. So now I've got my second pie and my second pie top ready to go. I rolled it out beforehand, but I could see that it was shrinking a little, so I put it back in the fridge. And then now that it's out of the fridge, I'm just unfolding it, giving it a little roll to smooth out the edges and creases. I find that the full top is super easy to make. You just roll it out and place it on top, but you wanna make sure that you have ventilation holes because when the pie bakes, the steam will create a lot of air pushing up. And if you have no steam release, it will probably crack. So I'm taking a little heart cutter to make a little steam release in the center. Uh, try your best to place your design in the middle of your pie. I clearly did not. So I'm taking the heart cutouts and incorporating it into my design to make it look like I did that on purpose. I'm not egg washing the hearts because I want it to stand out a little when I bake it. So we're gonna put that back in the fridge. We're letting our pies chill in the fridge for about 20 minutes before it actually goes into a hot oven. This way, you know, like I said, it's relaxed, it's chill, and not tough. So the pies are gonna go in for about 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm gonna turn down the temperature to 350 for another 20. So you know your pie is ready to go when the toothpick easily goes into the apple. Now we can pull it out of the oven, let it sit. The house smells 
like fall and now you just have to wait for it to cool you can cut it up make sure you eat it warm with a scoop of cold vanilla rum ice cream this is the golden shot oh never mind <laughs> the best treat the best treat for fall really and if you can make your own homemade ice cream that's even better and if you loved that video, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you haven't already. That concludes our apple pie video and I hope you try it out. And if you do, tag me at Alisa on Instagram. I'd love to see it. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Ta -da! What? Can't believe what? I didn't, I didn't, that was you. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. No, it wasn't. Yeah.